Hello students. Uh, in today's video, we are going to discuss about product of sum form and standard POS form. So, uh, as you know that in our previous videos, we have already discussed uh, about the sum of product expressions and how we can convert the sum of product expression in the standard sum of products. So, similarly here, we are going to take uh, this uh, product of sum form and then likewise we will convert it into the standard POS form. So, now first, uh, what is POS form? You see, when two or more sum terms are multiplied, the resulting expression is a product of sums. I have taken here an example like we have A or B multiplied by A or B or C complement. So, it is clear from this expression that it is in the product of sum form because this expression contains two terms. First term is A or B. But this term is multiplied with other term, which is A or B or C complement. Similarly, our next expression is also in the POS form because these two terms in the expression are multiplied together and the individual terms contains the OR operation. So, I can say that this term again is in the product of some form. Uh, okay. So, uh, now comes how we can implement the product of some expression. So, implementing a product of some expression simply requires adding the outputs of two or more OR gates. Uh, so, the number of the OR gates are decided by the number of the terms involved in an expression. So, if you see, I have taken here an example, a function is like A or B multiplied by B or C or D multiplied by C complement or D. So, if you will see from this expression, it contains three terms. All the three terms are ended together. So, therefore, the implementation of this function contains three OR gates and one AND gate. So, this is how we can do it. You can see the input to the first OR gate is A or B. Our first term is A or B. So, we are giving this A or B to the first OR gate. A or B is given to the first OR gate and in the second OR gate we are giving it the input B or C or D and in the third OR gate we are giving it an input as C complement because we are giving the input of C to the NOT gate which gives us as C complement and that is treated as an input to this OR gate and then OR D. Then finally, we are adding all the three terms together and which gives us the final function. So, it means that in a POS expression, it always requires only one AND gate at the last and one, two or more OR gates. Number of the OR gates depends upon the number of the terms involved in an expression. Now comes the standard POS form. Standard POS expression is one in which all the variables in the domain appear in each term in the expression. So that means, for example, if I will take the example here, A or B complement or C and A or B or D complement and A complement or B or C or D. It is clear from the expression that this expression is in the product of some forms because all the individual terms are summed together and then we have the and in between them. So, this expression is basically in the 
product of some form but we cannot say that the expression is in the standard POS form because all the individual terms should contain all the literals or the variables involved in the domain. If you will check in this expression our domain is A, B, C, D but if you will see in the first term our D literal is missing or the D variable is missing in the second term C literal or the C variable is missing. So therefore we have to somehow involve D in the first term and we have to somehow involve C in the second term so that this expression will come in the standard POS form. So now if you will see this expression this is A complement or B complement or C complement or D complement then we have A or B complement or C complement or D then we have A complement or B or C or D. So basically all the three terms contains all the literals contained in the domain so this expression we can say the next expression is in the standard POS form but the first expression is not in the standard POS form the second expression is in the standard POS form now we have to see how we can convert a simple expression or a simple POS form into the standard POS it requires certain steps so when we want to convert a sum term to standard POS how we can do it the first step is we have to add to each non-standard product term a term made up of the product of the missing variable and its complement the first step is that wherever we will find the variable is missing in a term then in that term we have to add add a term made up of the product of the missing variable and its complement and then we have to apply rule a or b c is equal to a or b multiplied by a or c as we have already discussed this rule in the boolean laws or the boolean rules this rule we have discussed in the previous videos as rule number 12 then we have to repeat until all the resulting sum terms contain all the variables in the domain in either complemented or uncomplemented form. Now we will uh, take an example and we will try to convert that into the standard POS form. So basically we will take an example as example which will contain the POS expression and we will try to convert it into the standard POS expression have to convert the following boolean expression into standard pos form we are given with the expression this our expression is a or b complement or c and b complement or c or d complement or a complement or b or c or d if you will see the domain defined in this expression is of four variables because the last term you it is clear from the last term that the domain of this expression is a b c and d now the d literal or the variable d is missing from the first term and variable a is missing from the second term so somehow we have to convert the first term and the second term into the standard pos form and ultimately the whole expression will be converted to the standard POS form. So how can we do it? We have to follow certain rules. Rule 4 of the Boolean algebra is A and A complement is always equal to 0. That means if I will or this rule to any expression it is not going to make any change because adding 0 to any expression hardly makes any difference. Then we have to apply rule 12. After applying this rule 4, we have to apply rule 12. So we will take the first term, then we will take the second term 
and third term is already in the standard form because it contains all the four variables or the literals so as you see that the domain we will write like the domain the domain of the given expression of the given function is of four variables what are those variables a we have a b c and d so somehow we have to include all the variables in every term so taking the first term our first term of the function is first term of the function is a or b complement or or c okay so first what we will do is like we will or it by rule 4 that is a or b complement or c or we have the d term missing here or the d literal is missing in this term so we will add d and d complement because d and d complement will be equal to zero so oring the term with zero does not make any difference so it will again come as a or b complement or c okay so now this can be written as this term can be written as after applying rule 12 the whole term can be written as a or b complement or c or d a or b complement or c or d complement so now if you will see the first term a or b complement or c has been converted into the standard term because all the four variables are involved in the term now we have to convert the second term our second our second term of the function is this one b complement or c or d complement b b complement or c or d complement so now we have to convert it into the standard again the a term is missing here uh, or i can say the a variable is missing here so i can just do it like this i will add the term a and a complement which will be equal to zero to the term so it will be equal to a and a complement b complement or c or d as i have applied rule 4 now again i will apply rule 12 which is a or b c is equal to a or b multiplied by a or c so the whole term is going to be equal to a or b complement or c or d multiplied by a complement or b complement or c or d okay so that means now we have converted the first term into the standard pos form the second term into the standard pos form and the third term is already into the third term is already in the standard pos form so now the expression our 
standard POS is for the expression standard POS will be equal to for the expression the first term we will write as a or b complement or c or d because we have converted this whole term into this so we are just writing this at the place of first term c or d complement then again we have the second term which we have already converted so we will write it as a or b complement or c or d again a complement or b complement or c or d okay fine and the last term will be as it is because that is already in the standard form because all the four variables are there so this is our standard POS form for the expression this that means by applying rule 4 and rule 12 you can convert any pos form into the standard pos form so thank you for watching today's video